and welcome to Command You Morning. My name is Charles Karanja. I love God and I know God loves you even more than anything else. We are grateful that today is another day we can spend some time together. And I want to encourage you, you know what? Whatever you're going through, it's not here to stay. It's not here to stay. It's not permanent. It has an expiry date. Actually, the title of what I have to say is, it's about to expire. Uh, before we hear the word of God, we're going to spend some time in praise and worship. So just get ready as we give God thanks, as we worship, and as we celebrate who he is, and we just revel in his greatness. We know that definitely change is coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is a mighty God. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 17, Jesus, um, verse 22 and 23, Now while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. Hmm. And then Jesus said, And on the third day he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. They, being the disciples, they didn't understand what Jesus was saying here. And here he is telling them, guess what? I'm about to be killed. I'm about to be taken away from you. And I'm about to be killed. But I've got some good news for you. In three days, I will rise. Somehow they couldn't compute. They couldn't see how. And it speaks of the human being personality. It speaks of the human mindset that we, we can't see impossibilities in our mind quickly enough. And so the disciples couldn't see that Jesus was saying, I will rise again. They were missing the fact that he was going to come back. All they were concentrating on was the fact that he would die. I want to talk to somebody who is looking at life, who's looking at the sentencing that life seems to be giving them, who's giving, looking at the situation they are facing. It may be a joblessness. It may be the fact that the business is not doing well. It may be the fact that you've been told you're about to become redundant. It may be the fact that indeed a disease is contending with you. A sickness and the devil, the doctors are constantly writing sick notes about you, giving you prescriptions drug after drug. They're proposing surgery after surgery. I need to talk to you and to tell you, listen, you got to know that there is an expiry date to this. There is an expiry date to what the devil has said. It is not permanent. Uh, it's temporary. I would need to let you understand. Uh, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it, the, Paul writing to the church told the, dis, told the church in Corinth, uh, understand one thing. That in every place of temptation, God has made a way and it's common to all people. Your problem is not, is not special. Stop, stop specializing your problem. Whatever situation you're facing, whatever challenge that you are facing, understand uh, it is common. A friend of mine likes telling me, Charles, commonize that problem. Don't make it look special. The devil wants you to think that your problem is special. He wants you to think that you're the only only one with it. I've got news for you. You're not the only one who's gone through it. There are others who've come out victorious. You have a right to rise up and say, this is my hour. This is my season. This is my time. I'm coming out of this grave. I'm coming out of joblessness. I'm coming out of sickness. I'm coming out of every situation that seems to be running contrary with me. I've got news for the devil. I've got news for everybody. My story is about to change. My story is about about to change this year. My story will be different. Uh, my story will be one of glory. My story will be one of health. Uh, my story will be one that will reflect the goodness of God. Uh, I need you to open your mouth and learn to speak to yourself and say that indeed nothing is too hard for the one who is a great I am. Bible says in, De in Jeremiah chapter 32, God asks Jeremiah, is anything too hard for me? And Jeremiah responds and says, no. Nothing is too hard for you, O oh God. Absolutely nothing. I urge you to keep speaking to yourself. Creation is waiting for you to rise to who you are called to be. This is your season to come out of every tomb. This is your season to come out of every tomb. This is your season to declare that I will not die, but live and declare the works of God. No matter what has been sent, no matter the arrow that the enemy has sent to you, I want you to open your mouth and declare it. This season is my season. I will not die, but live and declare the works of God. I will not die, but live and declare the works of God. 
whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. I am born of God. You are born of God. Whosoever is a child of God is born of God and overcomes this world. I've got news for the devil. I've got news for every challenger. I've got news for whatever contention you are facing. I've got news for every situation that seems to be fighting you. I've got news and I've got news for the devil. I was born to overcome. I am on top of every situation. I am riding that which God has said for me, I'm going places. Uh, I'm going up. Uh, I'm heading to the top. Uh, the mountain will not keep me. The valley is not where I'm going to be held down. I'm going up. And I'm taking that which is mine. Ah. What is it that we need to do that we may see the power of God released in that which pertains to us? Number one, prayer. Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1, Jesus told the disciples, study ye here. Stay in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. Bible continues to tell us in, in the continuing scriptures that, that they were together praying in one accord. And then Acts chapter 2 tells us, and suddenly the Spirit of God came down. Peter, who had run away, timid, could not hide, could not be able to tell somebody about Jesus when the Spirit of God, when the power of God hit him. After times of prayer, suddenly he was a soul winner. I've got news for you. Seek God in prayer and see his power released. Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty. Who are you calling on? Are you calling on your brother, your sister? Are you calling on somebody that you think can help you? Or are you calling on the great I am? Number two, catalyst of power, brokenness. Bible says that Moses is the meekest man around, that even God has said he was meek. Moses was a broken man, grew up in Pharaoh's house, was a prince of Egypt, really. Moses was such a guy with such, such upbringing, such greatness. Yet he had to go and live in the backside of the desert for 40 years. That even when God spoke to him and said, I'm sending you to him. He said, God, you can't use me. I stammer. You can't use me. He was giving excuses. Why? Because in himself, he was so broken. But God needs somebody who is broken to use him so that his power can flow unhindered. I pray that you will pray like me, God, find in me a broken and contrite spirit. May I be broken before God. I pray constantly, God, I humble myself before you. I cannot do this. Even as I'm here making this, uh, as we're ministering to you, God, I'm praying to you, Lord God. It's not by me, it's not by Charles, it's not by whosoever. No, it's by you, oh God. It's you that we need. And so even as I'm here speaking, my heart is crying and yearning and saying, God, only you can meet that need. Only you can heal that cancer sufferer. Only you can deliver that person. Only you can, can open the door, give the person a job. Only you can heal the business. Only you can cancel the debt. Only you can do something new, God. I pray that you will come to the place of realizing God wants us to be humble. Pride is a killer. The Bible says that God opposes the proud. Pride will never be for your good. God opposes the proud. God resists the person who has pride in them. So it's better to be humble. And I constantly am saying, God, Lord, let me be humble before you. Let me be broken before you. That your power may flow through to the nations of this world. Don't allow pride to steal the power of God in your life. Be careful if pride is not stealing what you have ordained. The word of God 
is the third catalyst that I want to mention to you. <clears throat> Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And God, when he spoke his word in verse 3, he says, let there be light. And suddenly the Bible tells us that darkness could not comprehend it. God wants you to come to that place of understanding the word like never before. He wants you to come to that place where you are so full of his word because his word releases his power. One day while Jesus was walking here on earth, a centurion sent elders to Jesus and said, please pray for my servants to be healed. And Jesus, while about to go to the house, the centurion said, no, he doesn't need to come. He only needs to speak. And Jesus looked and said, what great faith I have found. Why? Because that centurion understood the power, the authority of the word of God that is spoken. When you speak the word of God, there is an authority that comes from heaven. That it can only be backed by the word of God. David was in a place that was forgotten, a place thrown away, a place nobody was there seeing him. Nobody even knew he was there. In fact, when Samuel arrived looking for the king, David is not among the sons who are called forward. But the prophet said, until he comes, he would not sit. The word of God released over David moved him from the young man who was not even called, who was not even called when the prophet asked for the sons to come to becoming the king. The word of God is able to move you from the place where you are forgotten, from the back end of the desert, to move you to the top. However, don't forget what I said before. Being broken is essential because David was a man who was humble, who was always seeking after God, and he understood the power of being broken before God would unleash the power of God. The living word fuels your faith into a new season. When you speak the word, when the word comes into your spirit and into your whole body, into all of you, it releases a new season. Come to the place where you imbibe the word of God. Next, the words that you speak. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So the words that you speak, even Jesus while speaking, he said, your words will condemn you or they will liberate you. I want to ask you a question. In this new season, in this new year, this new period of time that you are living in, this new decade, what words are you speaking? Are you speaking words that are saying, God, you are more than able. Nothing is too hard for you. Or are you speaking words that are tied to the limitations of the circumstances and the environment that you found yourself in? What are your words saying? Are your words speaking? of your health are your words speaking of the promises of the blessings of God over your life are your words speaking and creating a highway for you this year this month this week this day declare use your mouth as a sword to declare Use your mouth as a sword to pierce that if God himself could say, let there be light and there was light, then open your mouth and declare that indeed this is my season for lifting. This is my season for promotion. This is my season to walk debt free. This is my season to possess my land. This is my season to go to places you've ordained for me. This is my season. Your words show your faith. When you look at the mountain, Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, continue. He said, speak to the mountain. Are you speaking with the mountain or to the mountain? Pe many people are speaking with the mountain. They're looking at the mountain. They're going round the mountain. They're going round. The mountain. They're going round the mountain. And all they're doing is speaking with it, agreeing to it. 
Yet Jesus said, if you have the faith of God, speak to the mountain, and if you believe in your heart and do not doubt, it shall be cast into the sea. So speak to the mountain. Speak to that disease. Speak to that joblessness. Speak to that barrenness. Speak to every situation. Open your mouth and declare, I am fruitful in every good work. I am fruitful in my producer. I am fruitful. I am blessed over and above. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Everywhere I go, I am blessed. Whatsoever my hands touch is blessed. Whatever I do is a blessing. Open your mouth and declare. You are blessed. Open your mouth. Let your home be filled with words that say, this is a place of rejoicing. Let your home be filled with a place. This is a place of salvation. This is a place of joy. This is a place of goodness. This is a home of well-being. This is a home of love. This is a home of joy. This is a home of peace. This is a home where we hear the sounds of God's blessings. Open your mouth and declare. Declare it over your job, over your career. I am blessed. I am an answer to the problems of this world. Open your mouth and declare it and see it within yourself. I carry solutions to the challenges that the world is facing. I am intoxicated. I have the mind of Christ. I have wisdom of God that comes from above. Divine wisdom that sets me apart above my peers. The wisdom that gives me answers to the challenges of this world. Open your mouth and speak it and declare it that indeed, God, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly above in this place uh, because of God who is able to do even much more than I can do. Learn to open your mouth and to declare it. Uh, my finances are blessed. Uh, my finances are blessed. Uh, I want to declare it this day. Open your mouth and declare it. Take your handbag. Take your wallet, my brother. Take your wallet, my brother. Take your handbag, my sister, and speak to it and declare. When I look at my past, there is money flowing. Everything is met. All my bills are paid. Look at the bills that you have and look at them and tell them you are paid. I speak to you and command. I decree you are paid. Your words release faith. When you open your mouth and speak it, you're feeling your atmosphere. You're creating within your atmosphere faith to see things happening. When you speak your words... When you speak the language of God, the power of God can flow. When you speak the language of the world, you are impotent. From today, that is not your story. You're going forward. Let your thinking, lastly, be thinking that transforms you. I urge you wherever you are, spend time to think differently. Spend time to think differently. Spend time to discipline your mind this year. Learn to be still, to, to put aside all the distractions, all the thoughts and everything, and to be still and to tell God, all I want are your thoughts filling me, flooding me. Think the word of God for your success. God say to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Speaking. You shall meditate thinking day and night about it. And as you meditate on it, you will see the word of God released mightily. The power of God. You will come to the place that you will prosper. You will come to the place of your well-being. And when I say prosper, I don't mean money only. That's limited. To think that the word prosperity is only about money is wrong. God doesn't speak only about money. God is interested in you prospering in your health, in your job, in your family, in every arena, emotionally, physically. He wants you to prosper in every angle of life, at every arena, wherever you go. God desires that you prosper. And so it's important that you think the way he needs you to think so that you can access that which he has set for you. God has great things for you. I'm going to add one thing and say the wisdom of God releases the power of God. John chapter 2, Jesus arrives at a wedding. 
And at that wedding, the wine was finished. And somehow the mother comes up and tells the workers, the servants there, listen, whatsoever he says to you, do it. And Jesus tells them, take those six pots, those six pots, fill them with water. And as they filled them with water, the miraculous began to take place. When they drew it out, it was wine. When you do things according to the wisdom of God, when God gives you an instruction and you obey it, it releases the power of God. I pray that today God will give you an instruction that when you follow it fully, you will taste new wine in your life. I want to invite you here, if you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, to accept him, to allow him to come into your life. Father, say this prayer after me. Father, I come to you, a sinner. I ask, dear God, that Jesus would come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and that from today I will live for you. That from today, I will walk with you. That from today, you are my God. You're the one that I look to. The one I hold on to. Father, I say thank you. Thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Charles Karanja. Thank you so much. This has been Command Your Morning. Have a great and a glorious day. God bless you.